Hello, everyone. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. I'm welcoming you from Kiev in Ukraine. Thank you for joining us today. Um, today we have uh, our guests is International Scientific School of Universology, and I'm welcoming Tatiana Chinatska, Olga Pavlova, and Santin Popin. That they will share with us about the meditative technique developed by their group and practiced on a regular basis. So welcome, Tatiana. Uh, hello, everyone. It's our pleasure to uh, organize for you the protective uh, circle. But at first, we would like to um, uh, translate to, uh, to translate or present our study invocation of the Aquarian era. Uh, that uh, what uh, was uh, uh, written or by our teacher Vitaly Andreevich Polakov. I would like to uh, let you hear the, um, uh, the record of Vitaly Andreevich, and then uh, we will uh, read this uh, study invocation. Uh, our uh, we will present it uh, with uh, Olga. Pablova and Konstantin Klopin. So at first, a uh, little bit of... Tanya, Tanya, one question. Uh, do, you, do you need to show your screen? Just let us know when you want to show your... Uh, just a moment. Just a moment. Yeah, the camera is on screen, okay. Well, it's not me. <laughs> People can see you now. Yes, we can oh, see you. Uh, mm -hmm. So is it okay? Yes, we can see the screen now, yes. Yeah, good, thank you. So, uh, the story invocation of the Aquarian area, uh, Vitaly Andreevich Polakov. Духа, что поля великий призыв эпохи Водолея. От оси мир творящего духа, что порядка хранитель вселенский, лого солнечный звездного храма направляет творение разум в чашу матери солнечной жизни. Пусть из чаши звездного храма будет передан матерью звездной импульс жизни детям ее владыкам, лик принимающим логосов храмов планетных, чтобы нести малым жизням природы миссию силы стихии процветания. Пусть от логоса храма земного образ разума в чашу не сходит, сочиная направленное жизни все равно духа от матери мира, что людские есть назначения от владыки их народам свершения. And now we will read it, uh, study invocation of the Aquarian era uh, with Olga Pavlova and Konstantin Klopin. Olga, please. Just a second, we will unmute Olga. Uh, Olga, please unmute yourself on your end. Okay, can you hear me? Yes, yes we can. Okay, okay. Star invocation of the Aquarian era was trans, as Tatiana said, was transmitted by our school <clears throat> during the meditation, group meditation in the style of coma, in the rhythm of thought and speech in which Christ Radomir also spoke. We translated it into English and want to present it to you. From the axis of the spirit who creates the world and keeps universal order, the solar logos of the starry temple directs the creative mind into the chalice of the mother of solar life. May the starry mother transmit from the chalice of the starry temple the impulse of life into her children, the Lord who received the image of Logui of the planetary temple to carry the mission of strength 
and elements of prosperity to the small lives of nature. May the image of mind that comes from the logos of the earth temple descend to the chalice, starting the impulse of life. The mother of the world provides the seeds of spirit for destinations that lords desire their people to pursue. The life-giving current of the seeds of spirit through the Lord, fair-faced heavenly children, gets clothed in three sheep, in three worlds of family, ancestry, and people. In the mona, that is a sheep from the world of the gods for peoples, in the soul, there is a sheet of the triads from the world of the cosmic fire. In the personality, there is a sheet from the subtle world of sacred treasures. May in this heavenly union of spirit, soul, and consciousness, the birth of the wonder children of the new age of the earth take place. Let the ideas of the future world come down to the minds of those striving for common good and progress. May the people, pure souls striving for unity, fill the world with creative will, realizing the impulse from above, to empower communities and the kingdoms of nature. That is how the experience of unity in the world is gained. That is how the circle of planetary protection is created. Let the kingdoms of multi-faced nature get the experience of get the experience of concord through the stream of a cheerful radiant life. May souls crystals of golden synthesis acquired by humanity grow on the tops of various peoples created pyramids. May the stream of the kingdoms of planetary nature, having absorbed a new experience from a radiant life ascend high to the chalice of the mother of the world, creating the coded steps of the worlds to the hierarchy of life. May all accumulations of the kingdoms of nature multiply in the chalice of the mother of the world, forming the circle of planetary protection for the fertile and wise earth. May the circle of protection keep the world safe from evil, multiplying the harmony of life. May the ascension path open in the temple of the faithful logos of the world. May the planetary logo of the temples that have the shining rainbow orbits of the second solar system send their accomplishments to the chalice of the starry mother. May the tree of starry life grow in the protective cover of the mother of the world. May her gifts ascend from the chalice to the heights of the constellations, sculpting the circle of the solar logos protection. May life pulsate through the architects of the universe, and may the world of the starry galactic temples expand. May the universe fill with the sound of faith, an eternal protection song as a universal call to believers. Thank you. And now, before we continue the protective circle, I would like to briefly present you the astrosystemological outlook for the current festival week, as it is seen by our school. And please, may I have the screen? May I share somehow my screen? Yes, just a second, Konstantin. Yes, thank you very much. Okay, can you see my screen now? Yes, we can, thank you. Thank you very much. Once again, good afternoon, good evening, dear friends and co-workers. My name is Konstantin Klopin. I'm a co-worker of the International <coughs> School of Universology. And I would like to present you with a brief astrosystemological outlook for this festival week, as it is seen by our school. 
And actually, it is not really a coincidence that this, exactly this week, between the 21st and 28th of December, this year, is very stressful and challenging. But at the same time, it's a very important and crucial decision-making period. Now I'm going to show you some uh, astrological charts. This is the day of the winter solstice that was on the 22nd of December. And you can see that there is a very strong concentration of the planets in Capricorn. That consists of two conjunctions of the planet, one Sun with Jupiter and the other, which is long-term influencing is the one of Saturn and Pluto. This is so-called so parade of planets in the, in, in the sign of Capricorn, causes an energetic transformation effect on all the system structures and organization on the planet Earth and hu humanity, like states, nations, political, economic, and financial mechanisms. And at the same time, the significator of the new Aquarian era Uranus in Taurus is radically renewing material and resource aspects of life. Such heavy concentration of the stellar bodies in the element of Earth will cause cardinal and even revolutionary changes to the global economy and finances in the year 2020 and the following years. And the winter solstice, which is the shortest day in the Northern Hemisphere, and the following three days until today, until Christmas are known as the annual period of darkness when people are tired because of the lack of sunshine and light and therefore most vulnerable to all negative influences. On the Christmas day, which is today, the earth is very likely to suffer significant geomagnetic disturbances caused by the ma magnetic storm on the sun. Scientists are already warning about the instability of the geomagnetic field that will influence the physical, emotional, and mental state of people. And finally, there will be also a full circle solar eclipse tomorrow, which coincide, coincides with the darkest period and geomagnetic disturbances to increase and focus the stellar energetic influence upon Earth and humanity. Solar eclipses, in general, draw human attention towards the strategic thinking, goal setting, outlooks, new projects, and careful planning of future actions to achieve defined goals and targets. All those factors may cause serious instability and fluctuations in human behavior, so social unrest against the ineffective style of leadership and management are possible in different countries. Also, this may increase already high tensions between different nations and groups of people in the international community. All these processes during this last week of this year might act as a powerful detonators of global and even planetary transformations of the near future. However, this solstice and solar eclipse occurs in the conjunction with the fortune bringing planning to planet of Jupiter and in the harmonious aspect with the significator of the new Aquarian age, Uranus, which together give the humanity a lot of positive stellar energy support, promise a lot of new opportunities of effective development, and open wide and exciting outlooks for the future. Depending on what decisions humanity will make during this week and what strategy it will choose, there are three possible scenarios of the mankind development in the following year 2020. One is negative, which is highly unlikely, and it is the destruction of the seeming stability of the world, increasing scale of conflicts, crisis, natural and technogenic catastrophes, solar radiation, epidemics, and human mortality of all these factors. Then the moderate, moderate scenario, which is usually much more probable, it is serial serious structural, financial, and economic global crisis that will result in future radical transformations of nations and relationships in the international community as well. And then finally, the positive scenario which we are working for. It is a um, gradual search for alternative ways of development based on the universal principles of nature and all on the new progressive, cooperative, mutually profitable and nature-oriented lifestyle. However, this scenario 
also um, may cause still a certain degree of the global instability. Also, every human being, depending on his or her predestination, may always choose between the three possible individual scenarios during this week. One is progress with the increasing opportunities in life, the other is like no changes, and the third is degradation. That's why the current period of the planetary conjunctions, solstice and solar eclipse encourages all systems of life on Earth, individuals, collectives, organizations, nations, and the international community as a whole, to make the choice in the favor of the positive and most effective development scenario. Nowadays, at the beginning of the new era, the old global system will be gradually eliminated and the new one will be also gradually created to replace it. A new human being of the new era and the new relationship between people, nations and nature will be born and start to develop. And the International Scientific School of Universology has, uh, uh, has anticipated <coughs> these global changes and created the strategic document called the Manifesto of the Evolution of Humanity that we were happy to present to you last September. This document shows the path of the global goal-oriented development based on the universal laws of nature, collective cooperation strategy and unity that will result in a healthy and happy human being and the formation of the new effective social self-government system of the future. The manifesto declares the principle of peaceful coexistence of all nations with different cultural, social and political systems, as well as different social groups, organizations, collectives and even individuals with different backgrounds. It emphasizes the freedom of choice and opens the future for everyone peaceful and mutually profitable coexistence will be the main feature of the global relationship in the age of Aquarius and will lead the world to the future prosperity. Thank you very much. And now I would like to return the control to Tatiana uh, and she will present the um, protective circle meditation. <laughs> Thank you for consulting. Today we present our project, the World Protective Circle. Uh, Isaac Asimov uh, said that history has reached a point where humanity is no longer allowed to quarrel. People on Earth must be friends. And that's why the Protective Circle helps people children being born and nations to unite around the image of the great heritage of the past, inspire and create the image of the effective future, embody it in relationships among the unifying like-minded people around the ideas of transformation and improvement of the world and build a new wave of life. The protective circle is like the circle of divine wisdom and love, the entire universe lives and develops from one source of life, eternal knowledge on earth, knowledge of the path of the light, is born from the unity and agreement of the purpose of each person and nature as a whole. The true meaning of human existence is the desire to create a protective cycle as the restoration of the primary code of life for the planetary community as a circle of divine wisdom and love. During the, our meditation, we bring the impulse of a new program from the hierarchy, from its protective cycle to the world. And only through the union of hearts, it is possible to translate this program into the world around us. So the protective circle is born as a new quality of the divine manifestation in the world. Through the creation of the protective circle, it is possible to overcome the destructive scenario of human life. The planetary protective circle can lead to the peaceful coexistence of peoples and countries, forming the condition for cooperation and unity. We invite you to join the protective circle of the stars brotherhood of the planet to protect peace and harmony on Earth. The protective circle of peace is aimed 
at creating and maintaining the dome of the world and unified energy system over the planet, the lotus of the world, the nascent of 12th new civilization, evolutionary affairs and projects that embody the spirit of the new age by collectives and creators creating the architectural plan of creation. So, we begin our meditation. Let's relax our bodies by bringing them into the state of harmony with the world and filling them with the light of life. Let's sit comfortably, not leaning with our stretched backs against the back of the chair. Move our legs on the it and our chest forward. The tops of our heads are reaching out upwards to the light while our chins are moving closer to our bodies, muscles of our head relax, as well as our faces, necks, shoulders, bodies and legs. The light flowing on us harmonizes us, and we start so tuning. Tuning to the flow of the light, as a pulsation of four elements of the nature by radiating harmony into the world. The waterfall of light falls from above along the axis of the spirit into our minds, cleaning <clears throat> our rainbow auras from darkness and grayness <clears throat> and filling us with the joy of the awaiting to meet the new world. Let's tune to these flows that flow into the world and fill it with creation. We are visualization them, and this visualization is tuning our minds. Let's imagine the silver floor floating from above that spirals clockwise along the axis of the spirit and fills us with the impulse of creation. <clears throat> Let's feel how all our energy centers, course of our chakras, awaken to life in clockwise rotation. We are getting involved into the axis of the spirit and the flow by reflecting from the ground forms the toroidal aura that circulates bottom up and falls top on again. This is the space magnet of all levels from the universe to the primal matter that forms the toroidal field of the aura around us. According to the law of polarity, the element of fire from above causes the movement of the element of earth from below. This is the experience of our past that we extract from our family, kin, and nation heritage. The flow of Earth moves bottom up counterclockwise, if seen from above, against the fire by ripping up the course of our chakras along the axis of the spirit. And from the tops of our heads, it flows down the aura and circulates by forming the toroidal flows that move in the opposite direction to the flows of fire. When the opposing flows of fire and earth harmonizes themselves, the funnel swirls are born in the horizontal direction. These are the flows of the element of air. The swirls direct the surrounding world towards and we are becoming attractive to the world. The flows of energy already circulate horizontally and concentrate in these funnels the material particles of Earth 
co-directed by fire. The flows of air unite together and circulate horizontally also in the form of the toroidal aura. The flow of the element of water collects all the flows of air together by moving against them. The circulation of the unified toroidal field starts horizontally. All four elements are born inside us and we visualize the unity of the aura surrounded by them. By concentrating, these four elements fill the cups of our hearts, being harmonized and resonating with each other. They radiate from our hearts with the synthesizing cold flow and wrap us into the toroidal hollows already containing these four elements. The mind as the cause and the program of our lives is the male creative origin coming into us along the axis of the spirit from Sahasrara and starting to form the prototype of the Y chromosome. The flow of the mind enters our hypothalamus centers by opening us the sense of our ideals, missions and predestinations. The surrounding world flows into us and we visualize everything that surrounds us and must be filled with our predestination. This is the space of our service. Two flows of the mind and feelings, vertical and horizontal, unite in our hypothalamus center and create the prototype of Y chromosome. Then we breathe in this dual young inflow into the cups of our hearts. And from below, according to the law of polarity, the fire of Kundalini gets attracted. And it meets with the dual down floating flow in the cups of our hearts. This trinity of flows radiates out and our hearts into the world with the starry shining predestination. Our male activity is revealed this way. From the elements of fire and earth with the element of air, we attract the matter from the surrounding world into the funeral. And this is the female origin of attractiveness. And the element of water unites these flows into the completeness of the flow of life. Flows that circulate in our auras create the prototype of the X chromosome. The female flow meets the male radiation from our hearts. They superpose, resonate, radiate, and create the golden flow of the synthesis around us. The toroidal hollow with the center in our hearts that allows a human to climb to the new heights and to deepen into the new world of relationships. We are feeling our hypothalamus centers as the centers of enlightenment with four elements again. The mind and the feelings, fire and earth are complemented by the elements of air and water. They resonate and unite in the centers of our brains. This flow radiates to the toroidal hollow around our heads and the radiance wraps around them. This radiation of the golden flow, we inhale into our hearts. The dual flow of the golden radiation fills us with the mindful origin and with the wise love that is sensitive towards the needs of the people and of the world. The flow of the element of earth is attracted from below 
so are the flows of elements of air and water horizontal. The flows of all four elements concentrate in our hearts. The resonance of four elements again creates the coding radiance, the second halo from the tops of our heads and to the basis of our spines wraps our bodies into the coding flow. The golden flow fills our third center, the creation center. From our hearts, the centers of service, from which we unite with the world, bring our care into it and fulfill our predestinations in it. We fill our centers of creation between Pakistana and Muladhara with the dual flow of the mind and wise love. It is the fire of the expression of our higher and true egos. Against the fire, our deep experience of the past rises. The flow of earth, the flow of air attracts conditions and events from the surrounding world. The flow of water unites all this so that the flows of all four elements concentrate in our centers of creation again and the golden light radiates out of them into the world. The third halo wraps us around completely from the tops of our heads to our heels. And as on the painting of Rerich, the mother of the world, we express ourselves in three circles of the golden radiance that shines into the world. They are our temple of life, our family, king and nation expressions, our protective circle. They keep us in the axis of the spirit from macrocosm to microcosm. And then we don't step away from the path of the creation of life. We touch everything in the world with this triple cold and radiance, and it transforms everything from imperfect to perfect. With this radiance, we build the united energy system with the ones that surround us, widen the space of unity and consent and this way express ourselves in all the complete complexion by alignment, serving and creating the world. We sense today as a new radiance of the tribal shining golden flow. Streams descend into us, based in starlight, pass through the individual higher energy centers, Sahasrara and Ajna, then unite at the Vishuddha level and then descend to the single spiral stream through the common Anahata and lava centers. Appearing from the lava karmic circle, they rise behind our shoulders, forming a toroidal aura. From below, as the answer to our descending flows, the earth energy rises flows through the lower individual centers, unites at the heart level. The union of the energy on the throat center gives rise to the group Muladhara. The union at the Ajna level gives the group Swadhisthana. And the union at the Sahasrara level gives the group Manipura. Above our heads, a group of Vishuddha is born then Ajna and Sahasrara group centers appeared. Another torus of light level is born. This is how the group planetary consciousness is born. So the help to the planet is carried out. Conflicts calm down, wars stop, People direct their creative energy towards creating the world of new opportunities in the brotherhood and equality before God.
Now let's take a breath by feeling our triple synthesis with the new opportunities and the new content of today. And shining this way, let's enter today to put the new content of our higher egos into it. Let's take a breath. Open our eyes and realize that we are now co-tuned with the flow of life. Every era of the world has its great call. The great appeal is the resonant frequencies of the radiation of the program of the era as the spirit of time and human thought. In the era of Aquarius, a new impulse of creation entered the Earth transmitted by Uranus, the eighth planet of the solar system. Once every 25,000, 90, 20 years, when the Earth's axis making a precision is directed to the constellation Aquarius, its energies through Uranus and portal is opened from the world of causes to Earth. And a new causal system world view is embodied in life, completely transforming it. Aquarius is a stream of life that covers gases from streams of fate forming a unity of destinations and their agreement in the general stream of collective strategy flowing into the ocean of life. And Uranus is a portal in which a revolution of consciousness life take place. And the world of governing causes is translated in the world of form effects. Thus, the great call is a resonance of the frequencies of the radiation of the world of causes coming from Uranus and the world of the effects of the Earth, including humanity, strives for a new life and spirit of a new era, providing system logical connections. Disclosure of the inner world of causality purpose of man and all surrounding phenomena. Formation causal system world, world view is created. Uh, creation takes place of collective strategy based on the interchange of calls, the mission of co-creation and co-ownership. The construction of public self-government is developed. The ecosophy of man and nature on the basis of multi-level coordination relations are formed. Modeling of a new social economic nature oriented way of a balanced, healthy and happy life for a new person in a new haplo group of elements of water is formed. the embodiment of the spirit of the new era of Uranus is created. This is the essence of the great call in the new era, living in accordance with the eternal ideas on the star temple of the solar system. Uranus, like brotherhood, as a novelty, search, research and disclosure of new facets of causality of life phenomena, Neptune, Equality and freedom as an exchange of discoveries on the basis on which the acquisition of valor and need of the world is forming, which gives rise to genuine freedom of choice. And Pluto gives us a new world of new opportunities for a co-creation and creation of new life. Such is the sense of the protective circle, like the circle that gives us opportunity to join with energies from the star temple. 
that helps us to build a new era on the earth. Thank you very much for being with us in this circle, protective circle. And now it's the time for questions, please. Thank you, Tatiana. <clears throat> and um, if anybody wants to speak, please do not hesitate to raise your hand. <clears throat> we will unmute you. Or you can also write in the chat box if you have any comment or suggestions or questions. Um, Tatiana, there is a question for you um, that uh, asks, Sinda Chene asks if you can translate the Russian language terms on the slide. Oh, <laughs> uh, which slide? If you mean this slide, uh, here is in the center. Uh, here is uh, depicted three hertz of the group concentration and meditation. The first uh, herd is created in the um, man or woman, uh, like the opening of this herd, and burning the light in the herd and sharing with others with this light. The second herd is opening uh, when two people uh, begin to uh, cooperate and uh, transforming themselves uh, and the world around them. And the third herd is the collective herd. Here is the third herd, collective herd. When the group of people cooperate, cooperates, and uh, uh, they aim uh, their uh, cooperation for serving to the world, to other people. Thank you for the question. Thank you, Tatiana. For the no problem. And also, if you don't mind, maybe. Sorry. Go ahead. Excuse me, may I just clear this word? It's heart. Tatiana was talking about hearts. But in the sense that by uniting together, we create a one heart of the group. Thank you. Um, Tatiana, the question about the translation was uh, for a previous slide, the one that preceded. Previous. Yeah. This one. Let's see. It's in the yeah, that's the slide, one. slide number nine. Yeah. It's this one. Nine. Yes. Okay, nine. This one. Uh huh. The concentration of life impulse of elements in solar system. Okay. Uh, here is just uh, uh, the names of constellations. So uh, may I ask Constantine to help me? <laughs> Thank you, Tatiana. Yes, sure. I will translate the names of the constellations. So the on the left side of the slide, you see the Big Dipper. Uh, you know, that's the Northern Hemisphere big constellation that is visible in the night sky if it's clear. And then on the right side, you can see the Pleiades. It's the kind of mm, small enough constellation, which is hardly visible by the naked eye, but it appears in the, it, it's actually located in the constellation of Taurus. And then in the middle, lower, Orion, of course, 
that you also can clearly see in the sky usually the th three stars like in one line in the middle and then two stars smaller stars on the top and two stars at the bottom then uh, this circle with the signs uh, as you as you can see in the white color this is the zodiac circle uh, you may know that from from astrology uh, 12 constellations that present the 12 universal qualities of um, of the universe of the universal being and also of earth of human being of every system of life 12 um, main qualities or basic qualities and then um, on the bottom side of this you see the star the it's actually the triple star of Sirius which is also known to many of you it's the brightest star in the night sky we can see all right then uh, on the right side here we have the core of our galaxy which is a black hole and here is our how to translate that the arm the um, galactic arm where the solar system is located and finally on the horizontal line you can see the planets of our solar system in the middle is the sun then of course it's the mercury venus earth mars jupiter saturn and also there are three um, higher planets or uh, distant planets uranus neptune and pluto that tatiana was talking about in her meditation and which are very important especially uranus because of the coming age of aquarius uranus is the significator significator excuse me of the constellation of aquarius and now as tatiana explained the axis uh, of this mm, mutation of the earth is looking towards the aquarian constellation starting from the most recent years these are the translations so these are just the names of constellations and stellar bodies in our solar system and in the universe i hope i have answered your question thank you thank you constantine <clears throat> There is uh, another question um, about this 26,000 year circle, cycle, sorry. Can you say something about the astrology of this time, please? The question is from Sara Marley Go. Okay, sure. I can answer your question. So the physics of this, um, is that um, actually the um, earth axis is not stable it is not uh, staying at the same time in the same position it slowly moves it's like you start to spin a spinner on the floor and uh, as it spins you may observe it and notice that the axis of the spinner is also rotating around so it um, just um, moves in a kind of circle the axis uh, so does the axis of the earth and the full circle takes uh, this approximately 26,000 years that tatiana mentioned and then um, because our visible universe we always divide into 12 uh, sectors according to the numbers of the zodiac constellations uh, and uh, every sector it takes about a little bit more than 2000 years if we just divide this 26000 by 12 it's going to be 2160 years uh, the axis of the earth points to the constellation to certain constellation and unlike the sun moves in the zodiac from aries to taurus to taurus then to gemini and so on the 
uh, Earth axis rotates in the counterclockwise direction, so in the opposite direction. So it goes for all the zodiac constellations in the reverse order. So it, if it was in Aries, then next it moves to Pisces or Pisces, and then to Aquarius, and then to Capricorn. And the current period of time is so that actually uh, previously starting from the era of Jesus Christ, which was about 2000 years ago, actually the Christ was the great teacher of humanity who descended from the hierarchy in, in the beginning of the era of Pisces and he opened the era of Pisces. But now this era of Pisces when the solar axis points to the Pisces is coming to its end and uh, this axis is moving from Pisces to Aquarius and this brings totally new quality of time and if in the era of Pisces the higher knowledges the uh, knowledges of the starry wisdom of the universal laws they were like quite obscure they were hidden from common people they were esoteric and um, uh, humanity was largely left without the starry guidance for the era of pieces or biases excuse my english <laughs> it's very <clears throat> it's sometimes not very nice sounding but that's the idea and the uh, quality of the constellation of aquarius is totally different it is very open it is very communicative it is very collaborative cooperative so it encourages the people to open uh, to start freely communicate to each other to cooperate uh, with each other to unite with each other and nowadays, um, also the biggest difference from the era or age of uh, Pisces is that in the era of Pisces, the work was um, highly individual and the evolutionary work was, did, was given to um, quite a few very advanced or talented individuals. Now, the age of Aquarius is the age of the group or collective work. Uh, the um, important evolutionary tasks and assignments are given from the stars or from the hierarchy, not really to individuals, but to groups. Like um, the groups that we have heard, for example, two days ago, the day before yesterday, six groups from around the world, the United States, uh, UK and Russia and there are many others in the world, but these are not individuals. These are groups where people unite uh, when they have, when they share common ideas, uh, common uh, worldview and uh, collaborate based on the free will, on their, based on their freedom of choice uh, together to help the human and planetary evolution and that's the main quality of the Aquarian age. If I explained, if uh, if I explained it quite clearly, but I want to emphasize again that the ma main quality is cooperativeness, freedom of choice, and the group work. And it is said also that the coming age of Aquarius will be the age of them. Let's say the um, planetary brotherhood so the relationships between people towards the end of this era will be like everybody or all are brothers and sisters i think that's our distant future that we are working for <laughs> thank you i hope i answered your question <clears throat> Thank you very much, Constantin. Any questions? Yes, um, there is a, first a comment by Riza. The, the information offered is profound, needing to hear it again and again to integrate it fully. <clears throat> um, she also adds one heart, and then um, she's also asking a question uh, about the circle of the zodiac begins with Gemini. 
nine o'clock position. Is there a reason it is Gemini? Um, no, I think it's just uh, shown this way in the picture. It's random position. Uh, the, 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 uh, the main thing here is that because we place this um, galaxy core on the right side and uh, uh, from the astronomy, uh, from the science of astronomy, you know that uh, this core of the galaxy uh, is of Sagittarius. And that's why the circle was point uh, was drawn on this picture this way uh, that uh, the uh, Sagittarius points to the core of the galaxy because the core of the galaxy is located in the constellation of Sagittarius. So the Gemini is just in the opposite. It's not really the star, so it's like eternal circle like the, you know, the symbol of a snake biting its own tail. It doesn't have the beginning, doesn't have the end, and the end of, and the beginning is just where you place it. But uh, Gemini is on the left side just because Sagittarius, which is the opposite uh, sign, is um, needs to be where the core of the galaxy is. And usually in the astro systemology, we begin the zodiac a sign from areas like in all schools of astrology the first sign is areas yes thank you i hope as i answered the question again thank you very much constantine and thank you tatiana and olga it's definitely very profound information that requires time to absorb um, we hope there will be a continuation for uh, our work together and so there will be more chances to share uh, the wisdom of your group. Now I think we are getting close to the end of the webinar, so if uh, Daniel or the, uh, have any final remarks, please share with us. Thank you, Alexandra. Thank you, everyone. It was International Scientific School for Universology. Uh, we hope to to see and to join with you uh, soon. Thank you very much for the opportunity of giving us this, uh, of letting us give this presentation. And thank you, Tatiana and Tolka, our co-workers, and Alexandra as organizer. Yes, thank you so much. This is Olga. Thank you very much to all who joined us in this uh, presentation. Thank you, Alexander. Uh, yes, the information is, uh, we know that it's just, we we had to learn this for years, uh, coming to seminars of our teacher from one to another. And uh, of course, there's a lot here to learn, to absorb. So it's just the beginning. We would like to share it with you, but it's, it's a great knowledge of the Aquarius era, of the Aquarius age. Thank you very much for being with us. And if I can just ask a quick small favor, if you don't mind sending uh, a link to your website uh, in the chat window for those that are interested to get in touch with you or read, read your material further, we much appreciate it. I think we can do that with pleasure. There is, uh, yes, I think uh, we should send the links, but there is only actually a small fraction of information of available at this point of time in English. Most of the information is in Russian. It is still a big work to translate that and just a few people. <laughs> Yes, just a few people uh, can do that, so it takes time. But anyway, we will share the links. <clears throat> uh, Thank you. <clears throat> mm.
thank you everyone for joining us today and um, I want Daniela to share about our coming webinars. Could you please, Daniela, I'm showing on the screen. Okay, yes, thank you. <clears throat> so tomorrow we have at uh, noon GMT a silent circle and then the next webinar will be happening on Friday, December 27 at 19 o'clock, that is to say 7 p.m. GMT on cultivating the garden of the Middle East with the Heckel Group from Jerusalem. I hope you will be able to join us for both events. Thank you. Thank you and let's stay connected.